Hi, I'm Dr. Jacob Hudis, and in this presentation I'll be solving AC circuit problems. In the process, I'll teach you about resistance impedance and Ohm's law in AC circuits. Stay tuned until the end for a clear and engaging explanation. Solving physics problems is one of the best, if not the best way, to learn physics. Here's the first problem titled The Science of RC Circuits, Understanding Low-Pass and High-Pass Filters. And I'll begin by reading the problem. For the RC low-pass filter shown, at what angular frequency omega does the peak voltage across the capacitor equal half the source volt? Similarly, for the RC high-pass filter, at what angular frequency omega does the peak voltage across the resistor reach half the source volt? Here's one type of low-pass filter. It's a power supply connected to an RC circuit, and the output voltage is measured across the capacitor. One way to make a high-pass filter is using the same circuit, but measure the output voltage across the resistor and not the capacitor. Let's start by discussing the solution to the low-pass filter. This is an RC low-pass filter. It has some input voltage from the power supply given by voltage amplitude times cosine of omega t. The voltage across the capacitor is given by some amplitude times cosine of omega t plus phi, and I'm going to show how we get this amplitude on this slide. This phi is the phase angle. I'll show how to calculate the phase angle on the next slide, but most importantly in this presentation, I'll give you an intuitive explanation and understanding of what the phase angle is. To solve this problem, we need to know that a resistor has impedance r and a capacitor has impedance 1 over omega c. The j is equal to the square root of negative 1, and we use that to calculate the phase angle. I'll go through that on the next slide. If you're not comfortable with complex numbers, it's okay. Don't worry. Be happy. In AC circuit theory, complex numbers are actually not that complicated. It's high school level material. And for this presentation, you won't need to know complex numbers. I'll just put them in a little bit. The impedance of the resistor doesn't depend on the angular frequency of the power supply but the impedance of the capacitor does. The impedance of the capacitor goes as 1 over omega c. So if omega is very large, the impedance of the capacitor is tiny. The total impedance of the circuit is equal to the impedance of the resistor plus the impedance of the capacitor. So now I want to calculate the amplitude of the voltage across the capacitor. I'm going to do it with two different methods. Method one is the voltage divider method. The voltage across the resistor plus the voltage across the capacitor has to sum up to the voltage of the power supply. This is conservation of energy. The amplitude of the capacitor voltage has to equal to the amplitude of the source voltage times the ratio of the capacitor impedance divided by the total impedance. This is the capacitor impedance. This is the total impedance. You can get a common denominator and add R plus 1 over J, J omega C together. This is um, middle school math. And then that tells you that the voltage across the capacitor is equal to this formula. This has a J. This has a complex number in it, and we want the magnitude. So to take the magnitude, it's going to be 1 over the square root of 1 squared plus omega RC squared. And this is equal to the amplitude of the voltage across the capacitor. And you can see that this is what we have out in front of the formula. Now, another method to calculate this is by using Ohm's law for AC circuits. I'm going to discuss that in detail in this presentation. Ohm's law for AC circuits tells you that V equals IZ, where Z is the impedance. The maximum current in the circuit is equal to V naught, the amplitude of the input voltage, divided by the total impedance. 1 over the total impedance is given by this, where the total impedance is this formula here. And so then the voltage across the capacitor is equal to I times the impedance of the capacitor. This is the formula for current above. The impedance of the capacitor is 1 over J omega C, and what we're left with is that the amplitude of the voltage across the capacitor is this formula. This formula and this formula are the same, of course, and that's how we get this factor out in front. I want to very briefly discuss complex numbers in AC circuits. Complex numbers are used to calculate the phase angle, and the phase angle is very important in AC circuits. The actual calculation using these complex numbers is not crucial. You do need to know it, but it's not the crux of this presentation. It's not what I want to focus on. On the previous slide, we found that the voltage across the capacitor was equal to this expression. This expression is a complex number in the denominator, and in order to get the phase angle, you need to put the complex number in the numerator. That's just the way this always works. And in order to put the complex number in the numerator, what you do is you rationalize the denominator. And what that means is you multiply by the complex conjugate on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to multiply the top by 1 minus j omega rc and the bottom by 1 minus j omega rc. This is just changing this sign right here. What this does is it makes the denominator a real number. So now the denominator is real. It's 1 plus omega rc squared. The numerator is complex. And now we can write the voltage across the capacitor in this form. It has some real part plus some imaginary part. 
And the way to calculate the phase angle is the tangent of the phase angle is the imaginary part divided by the real part. In this particular problem, it's negative omega RC, and that's the way that you can calculate the phase angle. What's important is to understand what the phase angle is, and that's what I'm going to try to give you an intuitive understanding of as we move through this presentation. AcePhysics.org, math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis. The question says, for the RC low-pass filter shown, at what angle of frequency omega does the peak voltage across the capacitor equal half of the source voltage? The impedance of the capacitor is a function of omega, the driving frequency. We know that this is the voltage across the capacitor. We found this on the previous slides. And if I set this equal to half of the amplitude of the source voltage, I can then solve for omega. This equation allows me to solve for omega. First, as I divide both sides by V0, that gives this expression. I can then square both sides and cross multiply. And then I have 1 plus omega RC squared is equal to 4. Subtract 1 from both sides. Omega RC squared is equal to 3. The results for the low pass filter are right here. The voltage across the capacitor is given by this expression. And when the angular frequency of the driving source is equal to root 3 over RC, the voltage across the capacitor is equal to half the voltage of the driving source. On this slide, I have plotted the voltage of the driving source in orange, the voltage across the resistor in the dotted line, and the voltage across the capacitor in the dashed line. And these are plotted for a driving source frequency of the square root of 3 over RC. Notice that the amplitude, the maximum value of the voltage across the resistor is 5, and the, math, and the maximum value of the driving source voltage is 10. That's what we are calling V-naught on the previous slides. So the capacitor amplitude is half the amplitude of the driving source amplitude, and that's because we're at this frequency, which we just solved for on the previous slide. Notice that the voltage across the capacitor and the voltage across the resistor are out of phase with the driving source. Since this is a series circuit, the sum of the voltages across the resistor and the capacitor must equal the voltage of the driving source. So for example, at time t equals 2 seconds, the driving source voltage is 9.7 volts. The voltage across the resistor is 7.3 volts, and the voltage across the capacitor is 2.4 volts. As you can see at this time, the voltage of the driving source sums up to the voltage across the resistor and across the capacitor. A resistor always resists current flow. Always. And it does that because as the electrons move through the resistor, they bounce off the atomic nuclei in the resistor, and they heat it up, and it's a frictional force. It always resists current flow. A capacitor can both resist and assist current flow. At this particular time, the capacitor is resisting the current flow. But it works on a different mechanism. Charge builds up on the capacitor plates, and that creates an electric field which pushes against the current. So a capacitor impedes current flow, and a resistor impedes current flow, but they work by different mechanisms. Here's the same graph that was on the previous slide, but now I'm going to look at time t equals 5 seconds. When t equals 5 seconds, the voltage of the power supply is zero, yet there's still current flowing in the circuit. And the reason that there's current flowing in the circuit is because the capacitor has charges on its plate. The capacitor is going to push current to flow in the clockwise direction. The voltage of the capacitor is going to get lost in the resistor. This is just for this one instant in time. At this one instant in time, the capacitor has a positive voltage and the resistor has a negative voltage. Because these are out of phase, when the source voltage is zero, you can still have current flowing in the circuit. The voltage from the capacitor is lost over ohmic heating in the resistor. This also explains why the amplitude of the voltage across the capacitor is half the amplitude of the driving source voltage, but the voltage across the resistor is not half, it's actually more than half. That's why you can sum up two voltages that are not equal to a half but still get one, and the reason is because they're out of phase. Now let's move on to discuss the high-pass filter solution. It's the same circuit, the input voltage from the power supply is given by V-naught cosine of omega t, V-naught is the amplitude of the power supply voltage, and omega is the angular frequency. We're going to measure the voltage across the resistor, not the capacitor. The first thing I want to do is find a formula for the amplitude of the voltage across the resistor. In order to do that, I'm going to use the voltage divider method. And I want to show you that you can do all of this without complex numbers. The impedance of the capacitor is 1 over omega c. Before we had 1 over j omega c, where j is equal to the square root of negative 1. The impedance of the resistor is R, and when we're not using complex numbers, the total impedance has to be the magnitude of the impedance, which is the square root of R squared plus 1 over omega C squared. To find the amplitude of the voltage across the resistor, we take V0, the amplitude of the power supply voltage, and we multiply it by the impedance of the resistor, which is just R, divided by the total impedance, which is this formula, and this gives us the amplitude of the voltage across the resistor. The question asks us to find at what input frequency will the amplitude of the voltage across the resistor equal half the voltage across the power supply. I'm going to take the, the amplitude of the voltage across the resistor and set it equal to half the amplitude of the voltage across the power supply, 
This gives us an equation which allows us to solve for omega. First, we divide by V naught on both sides. Then I squared the equation and cross multiply. And what we get is four omega RC squared equals one plus omega RC squared. And therefore three omega RC squared is equal to one. And what we find is that the driving frequency is equal to one over RC times the square root of three. This is a different driving frequency than what we found for the previous part of the problem. In summary, a low pass RC filter measures voltage across the capacitor. At low frequencies, the capacitor has high impedance, so most of the voltage appears across it, allowing low frequencies to pass while high frequencies are attenuated as the capacitor's impedance decreases. A high pass RC filter measures voltage across the resistor. At high frequencies, the capacitor has low impedance, so most of the voltage drops across the resistor. In both cases, voltage and current are out of phase because the capacitor stores and releases charge, allowing positive current to flow even when the power supply voltage is zero or negative. Now let's move on to problem number two, titled Ohm's Law for AC circuits. I'll begin by reading the problem. A 25 ohm resistor, a 30 millihenry inductor, and a 12 microfarad capacitor are connected in series to an AC power source supplying 90 volts at 500 hertz. Part A, determine the total RMS current flowing through the circuit. Part B, calculate the RMS voltage drops across each circuit element, the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. This is a series RLC circuit. It has a power supply, which has a frequency of 500 hertz and an angular frequency of two pi times that number. For DC circuits, Ohm's law is V equals IR. This is something that you're familiar with already. Ohm's law also applies for AC circuits. And in that case, we have V equals IZ, where Z is the impedance in the circuit. The impedance of a resistor is R. The impedance of a capacitor is one over omega C. The impedance of an inductor is omega times L. Omega is the angular frequency. C is the capacitance and L is the inductance value. The total impedance is given by the square root of R squared plus XL minus XC squared, where XL is the inductive reactance and XC is the capacitive reactance. Be careful, if this were a battery and this was a DC circuit, there is no analog to Ohm's law. You might have charging or discharging happening in the circuit, but you can't use anything similar to Ohm's law. In DC circuits, Ohm's law only works for resistors, and it's V equals IR. For AC circuits, Ohm's law works for everything, but you need to use V equals IZ, where Z would be the impedance of the circuit, and when we're dealing with the series circuit, the impedance is given by this formula. I want to make a quick note about RMS values. RMS means root mean squared. In all of these problems, the input voltage source is a sine wave or a cosine wave, and that means it's positive half the time and it's negative half the time. Now, if you wanted to take an average of that, you'd get zero. The average voltage would be zero, the average current would be zero, the average power would be zero. That's not helpful in doing the circuit analysis, and it's not meaningful because there is power being dissipated and there is voltage coming out of the voltage source. So in this case, rather than take a regular average, what we have to do is take a root mean square average. And what that means is we square the function and then take an average, and then we take the square root. And that's the definition of a root mean square. For example, let's say we wanna calculate the root mean squared of current which has an amplitude times cosine of t. So what we, what we would do is we'd square this function, and then we take the average, and calculus the average is one over the period times the integral from zero to the period. In this case, the period is just two pi because omega is equal to one. You can compute this integral using this trig function. It's not hard to do. And what you find is that for a sine or cosine function, the root mean squared is equal to the number out in front divided by the square root of two, and that's worked out on this slide. So if the input voltage is equal to V naught cosine of omega t, VRMS is equal to V naught divided by the square root of two. In this problem, they told us VRMS was 90 volts. Therefore, we know V naught, the amplitude of the input voltage, is equal to 90 times root 2, or 127.3 volts. We know omega is equal to 2 pi f. That's 2 pi times 500, or 1,000 pi radians per second. And therefore, the input voltage for the problem that we're looking at is 127.3 times cosine of 1,000 pi t. This is the input function from the power supply. Part A of the problem said, determine the total RMS current flowing through the circuit. Well, from Ohm's law, we know that V equals I times Z, so I equals V over Z. The V RMS value is 90 volts, and this formula gives us the total impedance for a series RLC circuit. It's R squared, which is 25 ohm squared, plus XL minus XC squared. XL is 2 pi F times L, where L is the inductance value. The inductance value was given, and therefore XL is equal to 94.2 ohms, 
Xc is 1 over 2 pi Fc or 1 over omega C. We're given the capacitance value of 12 microfarads, and therefore Xc is 26.5 ohms. And so we can find the total impedance is the square root of 25 squared plus 94.2 minus 26.5 squared, and that gives us 72.2 ohms of total impedance. That's a lot more than the resistor, which is only 25 ohms. So notice the inductor and the capacitor act as impedance. They can and will suppress the amplitude of the current. And therefore, the root mean squared current flowing through the circuit is 90 volts divided by 72.2 ohms, and that's 1.25 amps. Part B asked us to calculate the RMS voltage drop across each circuit element. Well, we know Ohm's law for AC circuit tells us V equals I times Z. For the resistor, V equals I times R, just like in the DC case, therefore 31.2 volts is dropped across the resistor. For the inductor, V equals I times XL. I is 1.25 amps, XL is 94.2 ohms, and that's 118 volts. And the voltage drop across the capacitor is 33.1 volts. Notice if you sum all these up, you get a much higher value than the 90 volt RMS coming out of the power supply. Why is that the case? The RMS voltages across the resistor, inductor, and capacitor do not sum to the 90 volt source voltage because they are out of phase. However, at any instant, the instantaneous voltages must sum to the source voltage. And to finish up, I have some conceptual questions to tie together all the concepts of today's lesson. Explain the influence of source frequency on the impedance of a pure resistor, a pure capacitor, a pure inductor, an LRC circuit near resonance, and an LRC circuit operating far from resonance. And now I'll show you the answers. The impedance of a resistor is independent of frequency. The impedance of a capacitor is equal to 1 over omega c. It decreases as frequency increases. The impedance of an inductor equals omega l. It increases with frequency. For an LRC circuit near resonance, the impedance of the capacitor or the capacitive reactance is equal to the impedance of the inductor. And finally, in an LRC circuit far from resonance, if the frequency is very high, the impedance approaches inductive reactants, and if the frequency is very low, the impedance approaches the capacitive reactants. AcePhysics.org, math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis.